more than 4 million non-white people were drafted into the armies of Europe and America during the First World War. And yet more is written about the four English war poets than these four million people who served. And this led me to edit Race, Empire and First World War writing. I put together essays about these various ethnic national groups that get completely written out of First World War and modern memory to give them a voice. But I also wanted it to be interdisciplinary. So we start from diaries, interviews, letters, and then we move on to how these people were perceived at that time, to how they were represented in the literature of the period. Of course, in the short term, war poetry perhaps hasn't made a huge difference because wars still continue to erupt. It's not possible to quantify the effect of First World War poetry, but these have very deep, but also intangible legacies and influences. And some of the best war poems, like Thomas Hardy's when I looked up from my writing, makes us ask the most difficult ethical questions. I don't think that First World War poetry, or more generally war poetry, brings us any easy, immediate reassurance, or even solace, or that any immediate prevention of violence, but at the same time, in their combination of pity, anger, linguistic pleasure, and moral complexity, they make us think. And this is one of the most important functions and effects of war poetry. As we enter into the centennial commemoration of the First World War, they make us question what it is to be idealistic, thoughtful, moral or guilty and ultimately what it is to be human.